Well, last week I mentioned that I was finished with this mud wagon body. And perhaps that was misunderstood that I meant that I was finished with the whole mud wagon. Well, that's not so. I'm finished with the building of the body. The undercarriage I rebuilt back in 2015, so it's ready to go short of a couple different items. I need to build the tongue that will actually fit whatever horses are going to be pulled by this. Initially it was Clydesdales, I'm not sure if that still remains yet today. So I've got to visit with the owner about that. And I have sent some contact information to the owner about what we're going to do for paint, for what style of upholstery and that type of deal. So completing this mud wagon still needs to be done. I just have to work out some of these finer details with the man that's going to drive this. So in order to mount this body onto the undercarriage, it sits on some leather straps called thorough braces. Well, it's like so much of this coach, only part of that was here when it came in. And that's the same way with the turnbuckles that came on one thorough brace that came in with the remnants of this coach. I only have one side. So I need to figure out how am I going to make a duplicate turnbuckle that matches the original. Well, these are a common style turnbuckle that's readily available today. There's one side that is left hand threaded, the other side is right hand threaded, and as you turn this center piece, it either loosens or tightens the ends of the turnbuckle. But this is not the style of turnbuckle that's used on old stagecoach thorough braces. This is what was more commonly used that I have seen in different applications for thorough braces. This one, it's all kind of froze up yet. I haven't taken off the old leather, but it has its own unique style as it's designed to clamp the leather on both ends and then you turn the center bolt which has a right hand, left hand thread. And so it adjusts the, the tension on these thorough braces by drawing these ends in. Well, this dried up old hard leather was all that was left of these thorough braces. But again, it gives us an idea of what it was. They seem to be five layers thick. Parts of them show signs of being stitched but there's a large number of rivets that also have been put in. So I need to just disassemble this turnbuckle from this leather. I'm going to run it through the sandblaster and see if I can get it freed up to where it actually will function again. this through the sandblaster and see what it looks like cleaned up. Well after sandblasting you can see the casting marks in it where this was a cast piece and then I'm sure machined out. This side is wanting to move a little bit. This side seems to be pretty froze up so I may apply some heat and get these loosened up here a little bit. This looks like it's about a 5 8 square that they did turn down and we need to have a right hand left hand thread on this as well as through these receiving nuts on both sides of this thorough brace. Well this right side and the right side thread came loose fairly easily. I've been working on this left threaded and left side and it's kind of seized up. I've tried to put a little lube on there and I get just a little bit of movement, but I'm kind of afraid to season it up and ruining that. Then I'd have to make two, so I'm going to put a little heat on there and see if I can't convince it to let loose. I'll try just a little heat to begin with, see if I can expand it. 
If that doesn't work, I'll have to take it up to a pretty bright red and try to burn that rust out of it. Then I let it cool natural and then see if I can't get it to break loose. That's all it took. This center rod is pretty bent. I don't want to mess these threads up pushing on them. I think if I thread it back into the ends of these turnbuckles and place it where the bend needs to be, I think I can press here. Maybe I can straighten this crookedness out. Need to bend right there just to fuzz. They're pretty close. Well, I think we're usable straight. It's not machine straight, but I think it'll work. So I'm going to start out with five eighths and this looks like about almost 13 inches long. I might go a little strong. Turn that and this I'm kind of breaking it down into three different pieces. I'll do the nut here. Looks like it needs to be inch and a half by inch and a quarter. These legs here are three quarter by three eighths. I may use three eighths by one and draw it out. And then this end, it starts to taper down to where on the very tail end, we're a shy quarter of an inch, probably closer to three sixteenths. And we're out to inch and three eighths wide. So I may draw this out for a section and then take this three eighths by one and draw it out this way to give me my width and square punch it for carriage bolts. So it looks like maybe the nut and then these two wings here. So I'll end up having to make four of these and then these nuts I'll turn one right hand and one left hand and see if I can't get them to match up to my screw that runs through the middle. So this is some of my thought process. I've got a 5 8 round, but the problem there is I don't have my square in the middle. I have 5 8 square stock, and then I would have to take and turn it round if I take my 13 inch section out of it. So in order to turn it round, I would have to put my four jaw chuck on one end and turn both ends around so there's time there. I could do a 5 8 and I thought about heating the center and upsetting it to where I had enough material that I could hammer it square and have my square portion here which would you know just put a wrench on to turn it. But if I do that upsetting I'm going to be less likely to be straight anymore, so I've got kind of a problem chucking it up in the lathe for that. So, my thought is, I could take my welder and build this up on four corners and make this square, do this shaping, and then I could use my standard three-jaw chuck, everything would be straight. I could take my standard 5 8 tap and die and could, with my die cut my threads, with my tap cut my inside here 
and then I'm just left with my left hand thread and I would just cut that on the lathe and do my internal boring for my left hand threads here. And I don't have to deal with a four jaw thinking for the least amount of work involved. Is that lazy or what? Or is it just trying to be efficient? That's my thoughts. I think I'm going to build this up. Well, this is what I've ended up with. I'm a 5 8 just like my square bar. Right in the center, I squared it up by just building it up with weld. I did stick it in the lathe and kind of make my corners uniform, which seems pretty similar to what this old one was. These corners are a bit rounded off, so I did round these off as well. So I'm going to start with this blank and cut 5 8 threads on one side. Well, that's the easy part. It's going to be the right hand threaded side, which will correlate with this end. More difficult part is going to be the left hand threads. I could go buy a tap and die four five eighths left hand, 11 thread per inch, but that's about 140, 50 bucks. And I can turn them on the lathe just as well. Well, I don't do this so often that I have to kind of rethink this. I have my minor diameter set for this 5 8 11 at 527. Uh, so I'm going to start cutting these left hand threads going from left to right. <laughs> this in the center I did cause a little deflection so I have a little variation in my thread here but the closer I get down to the end I'm running a little more true and this is where the bulk of the use is going to be used here anyway
This is the right hand. This will be the left hand thread. So now I need to turn the nut that's going to receive this left hand thread. So doing these left hand internal threads, I always kind of got to stop and think which way it's got to turn. I think I've got it right that I want to go the this direction, turn my threads inside. I think that's right. Well, I'm down to just my cleanup passes. I've tried it here once and it binds a little bit. I've got a little chatter in my boring bar. So I'm just going to run a couple passes through and see if we can't clean these chatter marks out just to fuzz. that the threads clear through the nut but they do kind of bind a little bit so I'm just trying to clean them up just a little fine stuff coming out here I might give that a try seems to have helped a little bit when you get a full nut on there it gets pretty solid I was having to take this little wrench and work it through but now I'm being able to run it through by hand so that's good and I think that helped I think I'll just have to work that through a time or two just take little burrs off and I think we'll probably work Got a little tightness to it, but my right hand thread that I cut with tap and dies, it does the same thing. Hardly be ever that the turn buckle gets pulled that far up. Yeah, it's loosening up. That'll work. So this whole mechanism here is the foundation of the turn buckle for thorough braces. Now I've restored oh, over a dozen Yellowstone coaches, stage coaches, that type of deal that all have thorough braces. And all of them have had both of these turnbuckles. So I've never been faced with having to refabricate this old style thorough brace turnbuckle. That is something new for me that I haven't done before. So it's not so much that I haven't turned ID, OD threads, right hand, left hand. I've done that before and that's part of the game of playing with these wagons. You know, most of you all know that there's right hand threads on the axles and there's left hand threads on the left hand side of the axles. Collings axles have right hand, left hand locking nuts. You know, so it shows up when you do this and even on that rubber tire machine that I use, you know, to operate those jaws in a proposing fashion, it takes a right hand, left hand thread on the top of that rubber tire machine. So that's part of the carriage business. I wouldn't say that I am a proficient machinist by any stretch. There's, there's those out there that are good at it and I'm not one of them. But I can kind of get by. And that's part of the thing that I like about the carriage trade is the diversity of things that I get to play with. So anyway, this is as far as I'm going to make it with this thorough brace turnbuckle this week. I'll try to fabricate the, the ears on the end of this that actually accommodate the leather itself next week. I do appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching. <laughs>